Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create unit tests in C Sharp using X units. So, let's get started. You can find the source code of this tutorial on GitHub. I will put a link in the description of the video. I have some sample code that currently is not covered by any unit tests. And maybe first off, I should quickly go over the sample code and show you what it's doing and what it's all about. So we have a bank account class here that has two constructors. One initializes the bank account with uh, an empty balance, so zero. And then the other one initializes it with whatever balance you want to have it. We obviously have a property that returns the current balance. We also have a method to add any amount that we want to our current balance. And same goes for withdrawing any amount that we want from our bank account. And last of, we have a method to transfer any funds from our current account to any account, any other account that we basically want to. So, the first step in covering this with unit tests is by creating a new test project for it. In this case, it's going to be an X unit test project. So what we're going to do is right click and add new project. For me, it will show up in my recent project templates. But if it doesn't show up here, you can find you can just search for it or go looking for it in, in the list here. So I'm going to pick X unit test project. So I'm going to put the name as bank X unit tests and the folder is correctly. Let's just quickly create this one. It's going to create this project with one new file. And first thing I'm going to do is rename it with bank account test. Yes, I want to rename it. So now that we have our tests, we can basically right click here, run tests, or in the run explorer, run all tests in view. Let's use this one. And the first time it will be a little bit slower because, okay, well, there it is. And now we have all of these unit tests working, but this one doesn't really do a lot. So let's see what we can do for our first one. The first one would probably be one where we test if the amount that we add actually updates the balance. So, You can just write whatever you want in the method name. I'm going to do adding funds updates balance to give it a, a clear name. And then the rules are that you always should have a, um, a range act and assert in your unit tests. So the first step is arranging all of the things needed for the unit test. In this case, what we need is our an instance of a bank account. So var account equals new bank account. You will see that we don't have any reference to it. So I'm quickly going to add a project reference to the correct one. Okay, it's resolved now, and now we should be able to add the using statement. And I'm going to initialize it with thousands euros or dollars or whatever currency you use. My act um, 
is going to be adding of some funds. So in this case, I'm going to say add 100 to the bank account. And then the last step is going to be of asserting, and we can use that using the assert class. And in here, I'm going to use uh, the most, probably one of the most commonly used methods, um, equal. And I'm going to give in what I expect to have. And then I'm going to verify if that's actually the actual result. So what I want is 1,100. And now let's see if the account uh, the balance of the account is actually going to be 1100. So let's run them all again. Yep, that works. So that's the first step in doing this. If we now go back to the pink account, you can see we have one, uh, one test passing for it. Now let's do the same, but for withdrawal. So I'm going to be lazy here. I'm going to just copy and paste it. And withdrawing funds updates the balance, which is going to be correct. So withdrawal 100 should be 900 if we did everything all right. Yep, we did that all right. What is the uh, the last method that we have is transfer funds to. So once again, going to be lazy. Transferring funds updates both accounts in this case. Now I need an um, other account equals a new bank account that has, um, let's just say it's, it's zero for now. And instead of um, withdrawing, we are going to transfer the funds to an other account and let's put it at mm, 500. So in this case, we should be able to assert that the, the balance of this account is 500, but the other account got the other 500. So both of them should be at, oops, should be at 500. So this one and the other account balance should both be at 500. Let's see if that's actually correct what I'm saying. And yes, it is. So we have three tests. All three of them passed at the moment. Now, there are some other small things that you can see in here. We have some uh, exceptions being thrown in special cases. So at the moment, we only tested the happy parts. Happy part being, we go straight to this uh, branch and we update the balance, but we never tested it with a negative amount. So we probably should try that and see what happens. I'm going to put it here because it's already almost going to be the same. So in here, let's see what would actually happen if we um, if we add minus 100 to our bank account. So let's see. This will probably throw an exception saying specified argument was out of range, which is correct. But the test now is failing, but we want to make sure that it's actually throwing this exception. So one of the things that we can do is instead of using assert equal, so what I'm going to do is uh, act plus assert here. 
because you cannot do it in, in two separate lines. But basically what I want to do is say, um, well, I'm going to put it here to make it more clear, is assert, uh, and we want to assert that it throws um, a specific type of exception. In our case, uh, it's an argument out of range, range exception. This takes in an action that we want to perform, and our action is basically this. And now let's see if we run all of our unit tests. Now they should all be green, and indeed they are green now. So we now have all of the code paths here covered. Let's now go to the withdrawing. Same for withdrawing, we can just copy and paste this one. We're going to put it under here and change the method name to withdrawing. Negative funds, oh, I made a small mistake, adding negative funds. Um, throws. It doesn't update the balance, it throws. Just like here, it throws. And instead of adding, we are going to withdraw minus 100. And now both of them should also be, well, all of them should be green actually. And yes, they are. So let's go back to the codes. Let's see. Uh, we now have an if statement still here. If the amount is more than we have in our balance, then we should also throw an argument out of range exception. And it's also in the withdrawing. So let's withdraw 2000 while we only have, well, let's keep it at thousands. Withdrawing more than funds, throws, and that kind of makes sense. You cannot withdraw more than you actually have in your bank account. So that's all of those cases tested. Um, and now the last one, the transfer funds to account. This also has a other account is null. So we should also test if it actually throws an exception when we uh, transfer to a non-existing account. The non-existing account throws, in my opinion, uh, a non-existing account would probably represent null. So let's put it as null and then 200. And now let's see what happens. Oops, uh, one of the tests failed because um, I'm saying I want to have an argument out of range exception but actually it's an argument null exception. So I'm going to copy and paste this and it should be this. Because this method throws an argument null exception instead of argument out of range exception. So let's see. And now we have pretty much all of our um, bank account codes um, covered by unit tests. And what we can do now, um, this basically verifies that if in the future anyone makes uh, or updates this code, then they can uh, verify if everything of the functionality is still working. 
to show that you can basically uh, change everything in here uh, whatever you want, change it, and it will fail one of those unit tests. Let's let's make something fun out of this. The balance will always return zero, whatever you do. If you would commit that, and then the, the unit tests run, you would have, it would show up as three failures, and you would not be able to push this commit uh, to the, to the master or to production and have bugs. So that's a, the true benefits of unit tests is to prevent accidental um, commits getting pushed to production and introducing bugs. If I change the add to withdraw funds, <laughs> then basically, yeah, we also get two failures because that's not what we expected to do. And you can basically do that for pretty much everything in here. You can even say that the transfer funds is going to be the uh, other way around, meaning we add uh, the amount to our account and we draw it from the other account, which is totally not what we expect at this point. And then you will see that we also have some failures in here. It didn't update both accounts correctly. So you see, yep, it's doing something wrong. And then you can investigate what's actually going on. So let's put it back and let's see if everything still works as expected. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you. This is the very, very basics of how to cover your codes with unit tests, how to prevent accidental uh, mistakes from happening, from being committed and being pushed to production. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you guys in another video.